Today we're talking about a TikTok mom who ruined her own life, but also almost ruined the lives of two innocent people. If this sounds familiar to you, that's because I covered this about two years ago, but thanks to Critical or Penguin Zero, I found out they actually moved on with this case. So to catch everyone up to this story, here's myself from two years ago giving you guys the rundown. Here's the original video Katie Sorensen posted. Monday of this week, my children were the targets of attempted kidnap, which is such a weird thing to even vocalize, but it happened. And I want to share that story with you in an effort to raise awareness as to what signs to look for. So she's raising awareness for signs to look for in a fake kidnapping. What? <laughs> this might be the pinnacle of what we call attention seeking. And to just encourage parents to be more aware of their surroundings and what is going on around them. I think right now we are so distracted by everything that's going on in the world that we are kind of have our guards up so much about masks and wanting to keep our children safe that way that we're forgetting the most important way to keep them safe and that is with us to not have them taken. So I'm going to share a story in an effort to raise that awareness, but it's, I'm not ready. This is hard for me. I'm not ready to share this story, but I, I know it's important and I would rather be uncomfortable and awkward and get the message out sooner than wait until I feel composed because I don't know if I'll ever be composed talking about this. Okay. This is so awkward to watch now, now that we know that it's confirmed that all this is fake and all this is just pointless virtue signaling for attention. But let's hear the story. On Monday, like I said, my children were the targets of attempted kidnap. We went to Michael's craft store just to run a few errands, get some things to make some homemade gifts. Very quick trip. I have not taken my children out a lot as of late, but this was just a situation where we just needed to run this errand. And I thought I came prepared. I brought the double stroll thinking I'd just throw them in, cover them up, put the cover on top, and just walk through the store quickly, grab our stuff, and go. I only had two items I needed to grab, and then I did a Target pickup, so that was the only time we were getting out of the car. So we get to Michael's. I park as far away as possible in an effort to not inconvenience others with our big stroller. That's what I, that was always my go-to. Whenever I brought the double stroller, I'd park far away so that people wouldn't be frustrated with me taking forever getting the stroller in and out. That is the first thing that from this day forward I will be doing differently. Um, if I ever choose to bring my kids out again. Since the original two videos are deleted, what we're seeing right now is a re-uploaded version of the first video, but I couldn't find a second part to this re-uploaded version. But what I did find was essentially someone paraphrasing what happened in the second video. So apparently in the second video, she goes on to say that the couple behind them was allegedly describing Katie's children's features. Katie claims that the couple walked out of Michael's after her without buying anything, and she claims that a white van was parked behind her car. After seeing that, Katie alleges that the couple were being hesitant around her because Katie thinks they were trying to steal the stroller. According to Katie, an older man witnessed this, but law enforcement has not been able to find him. Now, the police are apparently looking for him right now because they, they want his version of the story to, I guess, corroborate if this actually happened or not. So after that whole scene, apparently the guy in the white van jumped out trying to help her, but she ran off and called the cops. I guess she got panicked from the couple doing something, but it's really hard because I guess they didn't have cameras in the parking lot. Everything that's going on right here is a he said, she said situation between, I guess, Katie Katie and uh, the Martinez couple, which has now, yeah, they've been identified as the Martinez couple as the couple that she was alleging was trying to steal her stroller. The cops haven't found any indication that any of this actually happened. The couple Katie is blaming for this. Uh, their names are Sadie and Eddie Martinez. They denied everything and I've now been cleared by the police and they're also trying to press charges against Katie. The police, because of her, posted all these pictures of this couple all over the internet. So now I guess their family and friends saw that couple yeah. and was like, wait a second, Second, what we know those people. So now those people were essentially posted all over the internet as people who steal children because apparently they found it themselves. They, they saw it on the news and they saw themselves on the news and was like, wait a second, we were just shopping at Michael's. How did this happen? That's insane. Katie Sorensen is now facing two misdemeanor counts after she claimed that Eduardo and Sadie Martinez tried to kidnap her two children. She faces one count of giving false information to the police officer and another for false information to a police dispatcher. And as a said previously, it now looks like that Katie Sorensen has been banned off of Instagram as her page is completely gone. Wow, just re-watching this, knowing this is all fake, what a garbage human. But now, what's the update to all of this? Well, it seems like they've moved on with the trial. Police say this actually didn't happen, and that Sorensen's story was fabricated. After seeing the surveillance photo of themselves on TV, the accused couple, Sadie and Eddie Martinez, came forward to clear their own names, sharing their story with Inside Edition. Being labeled a child abductor, it's 
it's upsetting. It's heartbreaking. It's life changing. The couple who are Latino telling the Petaluma Argus Courier that they were at Michael's to buy Christmas decorations. What a nightmare to see yourself on the news as a wanted attempted kidnapper. Yeah, that's not how I'd want any of my days to go, but apparently a trash TikTok mom influencer made that a reality for them. Thankfully, they were cleared, but I'm still trying to figure out how you file a police report without 100% knowing they actually tried to kidnap your kid. I'm interested in knowing what exactly she said in this police report. Like, did she just call the police and say, oh, these people, they, they tried to kidnap my kid. Did she leave it that blank? Or did she like call the police and say, these people are describing my kids as she was kind of saying in those TikTok videos? Because I feel like she must have said a little bit more than that to get a response like this. She misperceived and misunderstood a series of random events which were occurring around her and made a honest report to the police on December 7th. Her attorney adding that it was when Sorensen reviewed the evidence that she realized she was wrong. I don't think she had any understanding of how this would spread and the impact it would cause. I I'm going to call a doubt on that. I mean, like to my understanding, she had a couple hundred thousand followers before her account was deleted. She has to know that people are going to see that video when she posts it to that many people, especially when the topic is as extreme as my kids were almost kidnapped. That's going to trigger a whole bunch of TikTok investigators. But it does say that Sorensen, which is the last name of Katie, is now in custody, being held on $100,000 in bail, and she faces up to six months in jail if convicted. So I found an article that actually had the district attorney's office summary of what actually happened. The DA's office wrote, Ms. Sorensen went to Michael's craft store with her two young children after purchasing a few items. Ms. Sorensen returned to her car, loaded her children into the car, and left the Michael's parking lot. A few minutes later, Ms. Sorensen called the police department and reported that a couple had tried to kidnap her children. Okay, so she didn't even do it at the store. She did it after she left the scene. The DA's office continued. About a week later, Ms. Sorensen Maiden published an Instagram video wherein she went into great detail about her near abduction of her young children, adding significant details that had not been disclosed to the Petaluma Police Department. The Instagram video went viral. Ms. Sorensen's report was determined to be false and was resoundingly contradicted by the accused couple, as well as the store video that was obtained. Sorensen later moved out of Sonoma County, deleted her viral videos, switched her motherhood essentials account to a private setting. She still has nearly 60,000 followers. What's ironic about all this is if she didn't file that fake police report, she probably wouldn't have been in that much hot water. She could have just made that Instagram fake video. People probably would have ate it up. She would have gone viral still, but uh, no people would have been falsely accused of uh, attempting to kidnap her children. So I'm really just sitting here like, why would she make the police report? Did she make the police report because she was worried someone was going to fact check her on TikTok or Instagram? Or did she genuinely believe these people tried to kidnap her kids? Clearly they weren't even close though, because she left the whole store fine. I'm really trying to understand the delusion here because like, how did she think that she was going to get away with it? So at the end of the day, an absolute nightmare for everyone involved. It's a shame that she did this in the first place, but hey, at least the innocent people were exonerated. I guess this is a massive tale of caution for any influencers out there. Don't make up any false police reports. You could actually get some jail time. But speaking of TikTokers in jail time, this TikTok couple actually self-snitched on themselves, committing insurance fraud, posted all of the evidence on TikTok and YouTube. So this is a wild story, and I definitely recommend you checking it out if you haven't seen it before. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.